something from like the 80s. Here's a big candlelight vigil that was held at the uh, um, So they kicked us out of the press building uh, because the parent company went bankrupt. They said, okay, get out. So all the workers got together the very next day uh, at a coffee shop at the uh, base of the uh, press building. And now some people left and some people were like, you know, whatever, I'm not going to try this. I need a real steady job or something. And so they went off to do other things. But uh, most of us stayed together and said, okay, we know how to make a paper, you know, Michael knows how to take pictures, you know, you know how to write stories. Let's just start, keep, keep going. So we started up a new paper called the DC Agenda. And um, because we couldn't use the blade name for that time because it was in bankruptcy. And so we, uh, we started up that paper. The community rallied around us because they didn't want to see the Washington Blade to go. We were, were basically like the New York Times of the gay world. You know, we've been publishing since 1969 and, um, you know, a real fixture of the community. So they said, um, uh, so the community just supported us completely. All of our advertisers came back, and we did very well. So well that we were able to buy back the Blade name and, and, um, and archives, as, at 42-year archives, um, and started publishing as the Blade again within six months. Well, in the early 90s, we were dealing uh, head-on with the AIDS crisis. Um, this was a time before protease inhibitors and uh, the cocktails that now allow people to live normal lives. Uh, AIDS was largely a death sentence at the time, and it was ravaging our community. In fact, the early 90s was probably the worst of it, because it just seemed like there was no hope. Um, and this is right around the time that I was coming out, so, uh, you know, of course I didn't work at the Blade at the time, I was in high school. Um, but, like, uh, the, um, uh, the idea was, if you're gay, you're going to get AIDS and you're going to die. Um, one of my favorites is Doug Hinkle. He took a lot of really great uh, photos of... Uh, of the AIDS crisis, and of course he himself was a victim of the AIDS crisis as well. He, he died of AIDS. Um, but uh, he took some really iconic photos that we were able to put together for, uh, for the International AIDS Conference um, a couple years ago uh, and put on review. Uh, and they're very touching images and show like the, the heart of it and um, really brought uh, the community together to realize how important it was that they do something about this. And I think that um, photography played a role in that. Of course, personal stories was what made the photography happen, and personal stories is how people connected. But I suppose photography allows us to look through time and see the personal stories that are long since passed. You know, people that I will never know that are long since dead, I can learn something about and at least somewhat know by the fact that uh, somebody took their picture. So who knows what will happen in a hundred years, you know. Uh, but right now, I would say definitely we've won the culture and that it's only a matter of, you know, a few mopping up events to take, to, to have a complete equality in this country for LGBT uh, folk. But that said, it's easy for me to say that in the ivory tower of uh, the Washington Blade office in the middle of the most pro-gay city filled with the most gay people, um, you know, where I feel completely safe. But I am reminded of like being uh, an LGBT teen back in Ada, Oklahoma, where, you know, you could be beaten to death and, and the parents would just nod their heads saying, well, it's probably for the best when their child is killed. I remember looking at the blade as like a 16 year old kid and uh, realizing, oh my gosh, there's like this whole community out there, this whole, uh, the whole group, you know, and that, that I could be a part of that. And I am already, uh, but I just, I grew up in Oklahoma, in like the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, and uh, moved to DC when I was 16 with my, with my family. And um, I knew I wanted to come out, but I knew that was impossible um, in Oklahoma. And um, so I was very excited when we got up here that I'd be able to do so. And I started to uh, read the Washington Blade and then started going to Smile, which was like, at the time it was called the Section Line Community Youth Assistance League. It was a, like a gay youth group, helped me to come out. And it was really the Blade, Smile, and uh, uh, this actor, Ricky from My So-Called Life, uh, who uh, uh, I know now actually, Wilson Cruz, he's now uh, with GLAD. But, um, 
those three things really helped me to come out and help me to, you know, find my way in the world. And uh, the blade, like, just holding it in my hand and like, you know, seeing it made me really feel that there was a whole community out there for me. And then in the sort of late 90s, we were dealing with lots of celebrities began to start coming out. We started with Ellen DeGeneres. And um, at the same time, also horrific things were happening, like um, Matthew Shepard, that whole um, um, hate crime event. Uh, and hate crimes were a, a major uh, issue in the late 90s, uh, started being reported on. I mean, before that, I'm sure it was even worse, but you know, people didn't report it. Um, so, uh, but it certainly captured the American imagination in, um, in the latter part of the 90s. And so that became sort of the issue. So, you know, it got printed in the blade and I saw it and I was like, wow, you know, like in, there's a photo by Michael Key. And I thought that was really cool. And, um, you know, so I was there at that Prop 8 event to, uh, to, to document it. Um, and I thought that would just be another crazy thing I've done in my life. But then uh, I went ahead and uh, just kept doing it. So I volunteered for the Blade for like the last six months of its life uh, and uh, continued to take photos. But then I went to the National Equality March and I covered that. And one of the photos I took from that was on the, a big cover of Sovo, which is that gay newspaper in um, uh, Atlanta, or at least it was at the time. And, um, and of course it was in the Blade and a bunch of other papers. So, but being there in the middle of all of these activists, you know, calling for equality and uh, at such a pivotal moment in history, I realized, you know, I'm actually in the middle of history. I'm actually watching it happen. I'm literally in the middle of it. Um, and I felt so much a part of things. I knew that this is what I wanted to do with my life, that, that science couldn't hold a candle to this anymore. So, so I basically, I, I got a real camera uh, and decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my life.